Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to talk about signs and symptoms of HIV. As you know, HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, is the causative organism of the most dreaded disease AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. As we talk about this condition, already millions are affected in this world with this disease. And in this video, we will be discussing the key signs and symptoms to watch out. As we know, knowledge is the power and so let's get started. Before starting the details, we have to be clear about one concept called incubation period, which is the time gap between the entry of the virus, any virus, and the appearance of the first symptoms and signs. And in the case of HIV, this incubation period can range from few months to 10 years or even more. And statistics shows that 75% of the people infected with HIV develop AIDS at the end of 10 years. And severity of this illness is determined by the viral load, which is the amount of virus in the blood and the degree of the immune suppression which is quantified in the terms of CD4 count. So the degrees in uh, CD4 count means uh, high immunosuppression. So higher the viral load, the sooner immunosuppression occurs. According to CDC, the HIV infection is classified as multiple stages. The first stage is acute HIV infection, then comes asymptomatic or latent infection, then persistent generalized lymphadenopathy, then AIDS related complex without opportunistic infection, then comes full-blown AIDS, which is the last stage of the condition. So what are the main symptoms in acute HIV infection? We can expect systemic symptoms like fever, weight loss, central symptoms like malaise, headache, neuropathy, then pharyngitis, then in mouth you can expect sores, thrush, then some lymph nodes, some sores in esophagus, then muscle pain, enlargement in liver, spleen, multiple types of skin rashes, then nausea, vomiting. So when you see these symptoms, you can understand that these are very vague symptoms. And these symptoms can occur even without HIV infection. So somebody after some risky exposure, if they are very anxious about the condition, they might feel these symptoms and they will be worried that, okay, I'm having fever now, I'm having a lymph node now, I'm, I'm having nausea, vomiting now, so I'm, I'm infected with HIV. It is not like that. HIV, these acute symptoms are very vague and there, there are no symptoms which we can say like, you know, if you have this symptom, you have HIV, nothing like that. When the patient go into clinical stage two, we can expect moderate unexplained weight loss which is less than 10% of presumed or measured body weight. And there will be recurrent respiratory tract infections in the form of sinusitis, bronchitis, otitis media, pharyngitis, then herpes zoster, which is the reactivation of the uh, virus which causes chicken pox, then angular chelitis, recurrent oral ulcers, papular pruritic eruptions, seboric dermatitis, which is extreme form of dandruff, and some fungal nail infections of fingers. And again, these symptoms, these also can occur without HIV infections. So any of you having these symptoms, please don't self-diagnose having HIV infection. You have to see the doctor and uh, do the necessary test and then only come to the conclusion that, okay, this is HIV or not. When the patient go to the clinical stage three, there will be severe weight loss, which is more than 10% of the uh, presumed or measured body weight. Then there will be unexplained chronic diarrhea for longer than one month. Then there will be unexplained persistent fever which can be intermittent or constant more than one month. Oral candidiasis, oral hairy leukoplakia, pulmonary tuberculosis, severe bacterial infections in the form of pneumonia, empyema, pyomyositis, bone or joint infection, meningitis, bacteremia. Then there will be unexplained severe anemia, severe loss in uh, neutrophil count and severe drop in platelet count. In clinical stage 4, there will be more serious symptoms like HIV wasting syndrome, 
then there will be uh, infection with opportunistic uh, organisms which will not affect any uh, persons with good immunity so these organisms will attack only those people with reduced immunity for example pneumocystic carina pneumonia then there can be recurrent severe bacterial pneumonia chronic herpes simplex infection then severe candidiasis extra pulmonary tuberculosis kaposi sarcoma then cytomegalovirus infection cns toxoplasmosis hiv and cephalopathy these are very serious infections these are very serious conditions which actually see in the later stage this is a slide you can see so many uh, organisms are there which can come as opportunistic infection in any part of the body in conclusion being aware of signs and symptoms of hiv is essential for early diagnosis and effective management remember hiv is not a death sentence and with the right treatment many individuals live long and healthy lives if you have any questions or need more information please reach out to us and our number is given below thank you a lot